All right, we've routed our board. There it is. And let's see, we have power input. I want to show you one more thing to do before we worry about our copper pores. If I select top overlay tab down here and come up here and say place a string and I go back to my same old thing before I place it. I hit tab because I want to change the properties and I say Mike's board. Look at there. I can put my name on the board and stick it right there. Now nobody will ever say, oh, whose board is that? Is it my board? Your board? Whose board? Now remember, this is just in a layer. I can click on this, look at the properties, and come up here and say, I uh, really, I want you to be the top layer. I want you to be written in copper. Now my name is written in copper on the top of the board. So I, I can do that if I want. Uh, it's not a big deal, but just think about it. You want to put your name on your board. It's your work, and you don't want it confused with anybody else's, so you put your name on there some kind of or your project name or whatever all right now we still have the problem of my board here when i put my mouse here at the corner is still basically at one inch by one inch uh, i don't want that i want my board to start at zero so i'm going to come up here to this toolbar utility tools i think you can always uh, turn the toolbars on up here too make sure utilities is there so I'm going to go to utilities here and see that little guy right there it kind of looks like an atom right with a, a dot with a three lines set origin. I'm going to come here and say I want this to be my origin. Now before I set it look at the bottom left of the screen that says I'm at 1000 by 1000. I'm going to click now I'm at zero by zero. So now I know that my board the origin of my board starts at zero. So if I drag my board up here and zoom in and put my mouse up here, where is this point? Oh, my board's 2.3 inches by 1.745 inches. Now I know the size of my board now. That's where that's useful. All right, so let's, let's pour some copper. And the reason I want to pour some copper on here is... Uh, often when you make your boards, if you want them to be a little more robust, it can help with noise immunity and help move power around your board. So I'm going to select my bottom layer. I'm going to tell it place a polygon pour. Now, as soon as I do that, it's ready to place, but not yet. I want to change the properties. I hit tab. And I say, what net do I want it to pour to? I want this one to pour to ground and then what do I want horizontal lines vertical lines 90 degrees whatever uh, let's just pick horizontal I'm gonna get horizontal lines I'll hit my, my little symbol here right the pause symbol so it'll start and I can zoom in here and say all right let's place my pour I'm just gonna draw the area that I want the pour to be in It's a little easier if I zoom in to get it just where I want it. Zoom out to move fast. Zoom back in again. I'll zoom out. I can move fast. There we go. Let's zoom in and make sure I get all the way to the bottom. All right, so I'm putting all this on there. Double click, I'll zoom out. If I right click, it means I stop placing. All right. So now we can see it put copper, filled all that with copper. Everywhere that there's a ground connection, it's connected right here to these spokes to our pour. Well, that's not bad. Well, let me see. I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to change it. I'm going to say I actually want 45 degree. I want that to be 45 degrees. Now, look, it's turned green. It's not happy. I changed the rule. It doesn't match what's there. So I'm going to come up here to Tools, Polygon Pours, and I'm going to tell it Repour All. 
so it's going to re-pour it. Ooh, look at that. Much nicer. I have a little more copper on there, right? I could make it solid copper if I wanted also. Just a whole sheet on there. Or I can have this nice pattern. So there's the pattern. If I told it solid, I could do the same thing. Go to Tools, Polygon Pours, Repour All. There we go. So now you can see that every trace that's connected to ground has a spoke connecting it to the plane. Everywhere we go. Look at this guy. He's got four spokes. And you might wonder, why don't you just connect it straight to ground? Why, why does this pen have to go through this little tiny spoke? Well, the reason for that is, is copper is a very good conductor of heat. And when I go to solder this, when I put my iron right here on this pen, if I have this whole sheet of copper stuck on there with no space, no spokes, just connected directly, it's going to radiate the heat all out through that sheet of copper and I'm going to have to wait a long time until I can get that pin hot enough to solder. So in order to bypass that they put these little spokes. Now I can just move a little bit of heat through there but they're short so there's almost no resistance for the current to flow but some resistance for the heat to flow and I can solder it. That's that's why that's there. All right let's place one on the top. I'm going to tell it place polygon pour let's see I'll hit tab and I'll say I want it, this one to be 45 degrees all right and I'll zoom in here a little bit we'll just draw our copper pour and I will say that we made our board like a rectangle shape it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a rectangle once in a while you'll have a project that has to fit inside a box and the box might have a cutout in it somewhere and I'll do a quick demo and show you that that you can make this thing any shape you want there we go so now I have a copper pour on the top if I click the bottom tab here there's a solid copper on the bottom copper pour on the top those are also connected to ground I may change my mind and say, yeah, I like that, but maybe I made a mistake. I want it to be connected to plus nine. No problem. Come back up here and say, you need to re-pour all those. And now if I look up here, my top layer connected to plus nine. My bottom layer connected to ground. Those are useful, very useful tools. I do want you to notice though that when we look here there's only about a 10 mil space that copper pour is pretty close to that trace now when you get a board professionally manufactured it's going to look like this it has this green solder mask and that green solder mask is an insulator so you'll see that the only place you can make an electrical connection is on the pads everything else is insulated if you get behind and you have a last ditch effort and you order your board called bare bones, it'll look like this. You'll see that the traces on this board have no solder mask. That means I can short across those. So when I solder these, if I'm not careful, I can easily short between those tiny points. That's with no solder mask. So we could change a rule. We could come into the rules and make a rule a clearance rule we can add one so if I look at these rules rule wizard and I say I want to add a rule to it because what I want to be able to do is is uh, adjust this so that when it does the copper pour it'll make a bigger space around the trace so let's see I'm gonna come here and say new rule there it is and that one's on top and I'll say custom query and I'll change the query to in in polygon if it's in the polygon then I want the minimum clearance to be I'm going to make it big so it's easy to see 50 let's do that minimum clearance is 50 
apply and OK. So now it's going to apply those rules. It's going to look at it and say, look, there's, I failed. I'm failing all these rules again because you changed things. So we go right back again to Tools and uh, Polygon Pours, Repour All. Let's see what happens. Boom. Look at those giant spaces now because I made a rule that said if you're in a polygon, you have to have a clearance of 50 mils around everything. So I, it did. It made a big giant space. Notice also that I lost my connections. Right? I'm no longer connecting to the polygons. That's because that rule interferes with another rule. If you have a problem with that, come and see me. We can work on it. Most of the time, you don't need that rule. You don't need to have this extra rule. So we can come up here and say we want to delete that rule and apply. Get rid of it. OK. And then I can come back and say, go ahead, report all. There we go. It is possible to change the rules to have those spokes really long and going out. Um, most of the time, we don't need those polygon pores. Uh, you can put it on when you're doing your board if you're going to have it manufactured with a solder mask. But if you are going to have it manufactured like this, I would suggest that you just don't have the copper pores because you don't need them. The last thing in this video that we're going to talk about is how to produce our files for manufacture. These files are called Gerber files, and they're basically text files, but it explains and tells everything about your board. So I'm going to get the process started here. When I have my board up, I can go to File, Fabrication Outputs, and there's going to be two things we're going to use here, Gerber files and NC drill files. So let's start with Gerber files. I'm going to tell it I want to generate Gerber files, and it pops up. And it says, what do I want to use, inches or millimeters and all, it doesn't really matter as long as you stay consistent. Plot layers, it asks me, which layers do I want to plot? Oh boy, I got a lot of layers here, I could guess, right? Or I can use this button. I love this button because it does it for me. Any layer that I've used, select it. There it is, they're selected. So I didn't need this one, right, mechanical one, because I didn't use it. I'm going to tell it, apply. And it's going to generate this CAM file. Now I'll go back to my PCB. I'm going to tell it fabrication outputs, NC drill files. I'm still in millimeters and 4.4. I've just left my defaults the same. That way they match. If I went up here and changed the format, I might get a board like this and the drill holes would be out here somewhere and it wouldn't work. The uh, manufacturers would, would contact you back and say there's an error. So I leave my default, I tell it OK. Yep, the units look good. I never have to change that. Here we go. There's all the holes, right? I can see my mounting holes, right? There's the dip holes. Perfect. I'm going to tell it save all. Yep, I can save that cam file and save that cam file. I don't really need these cam files, so I'm going to right click and say close the camtastic documents. Those are now closed, right? You can't, you can't see them, or we don't need them anymore. They are in my project. I could go in there and open them up again, but I, I don't need them right now. So after those are done, what we really need to do is grab all those files. We'll take a quick look at them here. I'll show them to you. You'll see in the file folder, remember we saved it as op-amp, and inside the op-amp file folder, I have one that says project outputs for op-amp. Here's my other files that we did, that we used, right? My PCB doc, my schematic doc, right? It's all in there. And here's the project outputs. I'll open that up. And we have a bunch of files here. These are all the Gerber files. Now, when I look at these, I see GTL on this one. That means Gerber top layer. Pretty easy to figure out. Here's a GBL, Gerber bottom layer, right? I have a GKO, Gerber keep out. So all my files are in there, and I can see them all. Now, if I open one of these, I think I can open this with, I want to open this with a uh, text reader, because it's all text. I'll open it with Notepad. 
and there's the text so this is all the information that is telling the manufacturer where the trace is where the copper is and all that you can you can see it all it's it's kind of like a CNC file where they have G code for CNC machines anyways this goes on and on and this gets boring in a hurry but it's a whole bunch of text on there and the manufacturers machines can read this and generate the uh, uh, PCB the drill file although you would think it might be the DRR or DRL or whatever it's not it's this guy op amp text if I open him up here we go it's telling me again where's the X location and the Y location and the size of the hole and it tells you how to drill all the holes those are all the text files now to get it to the manufacturer I generally do a control all select all the files in the project outputs I right click and I tell it compress to zip file and there's my op amp zip right there that's the file that I'll send off to the manufacturer all right that's about it now we got everything done we've placed our pores and talked about all that and the rules and we've generated our Gerbers